The world is passing away. Far too many of God's children are operating in an environment we were not redeemed for. We were redeemed for another kingdom, and God wants us to operate out of that worldview, not this worldview. And if you're trying to operate off of this worldview, when you were born again for this worldview, you're going to be sucking satanic air. Romans 12, 2 says, be not conformed to this world. Now, that's a picturesque word. Uh, it's, it's used of a, of, a, of a person who handles clay. This potter handles clay and he molds it. He conforms it <clears throat> into an image that he has in his mind. If he wants a plate, he makes the clay into a plate or a pot or a cup or a saucer or a bowl. He conforms it to an image. He says, be not, Romans 12, 2, conform to this world. Now, exactly how does a potter form clay into what he wants the clay to look like? Pressure. He got to squeeze it here, push it here, twist it there to make it look like what he wants it to look like. You and I live in a world that wants to pressure you into its image, pressure you into thinking like it thinks, walking like it walks, talking like it talks, acting like it acts, accepting what it's deceptive, and it will make you look like a fool if you don't abide by the pressure. And if you don't go with the program, we'll threaten to cancel you. Because you ain't going along with This is how we roll now. And the, the pressure is greater now because we're in a postmodern age. Postmodernity, postmodernism is where the Judeo-Christian worldview has been rejected. There used to be a time, even when it wasn't consistently adhered to, that there was an atmosphere where a Judeo-Christian worldview was at least respected, even by non-Christians. But the more secular the culture has become, the more that worldview has been jettisoned. And the jettisoning of that worldview has now brought in conflicting and competing worldviews that are pressuring you. It is costing people their jobs, it is costing people their, their preferences. It is renaming people. It is redefining institutions. And you're under the pressure to accept it. He says, don't let the world force you into its mold. That is to accept its values. Now, now that does not mean that you're not without compassion, you're not without love, you're not without consideration, you're not without concern. You just have values that are, cannot be adjusted. Don't let the world press you. You should be concerned about the pressure some of your kids are getting from their peers to pressure them into a conforming worldview. Because we see today that the secular society is pressing us. Many have left the church. Part of that is the church's fault for its irrelevancy and its lack of uh, biblical authenticity. But on the other side of that coin is a society that's, make, that's normalizing things. And if you want to be part of the in crew, you got to buy into the pressure. If you're going to be serious as a Christian, then you cannot fall into the fatal trap of conforming, being pressed into a world order that leaves God out. He says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. And then he tells you why that's not a good idea. Because he says at the end of verse 1, 
If anyone, that means no exceptions, loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Mm. Mm. He's talking to Christians. If you, I, we, us love the world, your relationship with your daddy in heaven has been jeopardized. He's still your father. He's still your father because you're his child if you're a Christian, but you have jeopardized intimacy. If you love the world, he won't hang with you. So one of the reasons why more of us aren't experiencing more of God is we got too great a love affair with the world. And God is saying, well, if you want the world, you can't have me. James 4.4 says, friendship with the world is hostility with God. So it's not even like, we, we can't even be friends with the world. Friendship with the world makes you God's enemy. So God has a lot of enemies among his children. And they don't even know that they're the father's enemy. But then we call on the father to help us be closer to his enemy, the world. We're actually calling on God to be happy that we have this intimate relationship with his enemy. He says, no, 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 no. The love of the father. The intimacy with the Father. Why? Because Galatians chapter 1 verse 4 says that Jesus came to redeem us from the world. Paul says in Galatians 6 14, I am crucified from the world. In other words, I'm in it. I participate with it, but what I don't do is adopt the values of it. So I'm not like everybody else on the job. I'm not like everybody else in the school. I'm not like everybody else in the neighborhood. I'm not like them because I don't love that. What I love is the Father. And what you need to know about the world is when it finishes with you, it will spit you out. You may love it, and it may look like it's loving you right now. But you, you, you and I are to be marching out of step because we're listening to a different drumbeat. We are unique in our spheres. Imperfect as we are, we are unique because we want the Father more than we want the world. We've all seen a fish out of water. If you've seen a fish out of water, it's trying to survive. You know? It's trying to make it. The problem is, it's trying to make it in in an environment it was never created for. See, it's struggling to exist And the reason, the only reason the fish is struggling is because it's not supposed to be there. Because once you throw the fish back in the water, it can be what it was created to be because it's where it was created to exist. Far too many of God's children are (laughs) gills flopping and mouths open because we are operating in an environment we were not redeemed for. We were redeemed for another kingdom and God wants us to operate out of that worldview, not this worldview. And if you're trying to operate off of this worldview, when you were born again for this worldview, you're going to be sucking satanic air. And you'll wonder why you're choking. Because we're operating in the wrong environment. 
Not because we're there. God expects you to be his representative in whatever sphere he has you. But he expects you to be his representative in whatever sphere he has you. And not to say, well, God, the world doesn't want you here, so you just stay outside now. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4.10, Demas, Demas has forsaken me, forsaken me, having loved this present world. Key word is present. You know what gets us about the world? It gives us the impression this is all there is. Demas has forsaken me because he has loved this present world. He was, he was in with me in ministry, but then the world got so good to him that he forsook me. He wanted the applause of the secular crowd. He wanted the recognition of the ungodly audience. He wanted the, he wanted the embrace of the culture. And because he wanted that so badly, he walked away from God. Now, Jesus did say it, I have to say. The world hates me, he says. So when you choose me in an arena where the world rejects me, you're going to have issues. So I don't want to just talk pie in the sky stuff. No, you're going to have issues when the values of God clash with the values of this world. There's going to be a clash. Not because you're trying to make a clash, not because you're unloving or non-compassionate. It's just the values don't agree. But the question is, do you want the world or do you want the Father? When Adam and Eve broke away from God, the price tag of losing fellowship was awesome. So, in order for us to, to operate now, because the whole point here is to return to God, to, to get back on in sync with him individually as your family and as a church, is we have to understand the chronology of the world. Verse 17. The world is passing away. And also it's lust, but the one who does the will of God abides forever. He says, you need to understand something. <laughs> the world is passing away. It's going to leave you or you're going to leave it. Don't make permanent something that's temporary. Don't make permanent something that's temporary. The world is passing away. So don't act like it's not going nowhere or you're not going nowhere. Some, something's going to move here. The world is passing away. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. I have, let's say I have the wherewithal and I'm going to give you Ten million dollars. Do I have any takers? If you knew I was for real. Mm -hmm. so I knew I had a lot of folk who loved the world. Right there, right there. Okay. I'm going to give you ten million dollars. And you know that I have it. And you know I meant it when I said I'm going to give you ten million dollars. We're going to gravitate to that. There's one condition. I just got one condition. At the end of 365 days, at the end of the year, you have to commit suicide. How many want the $10 million? How many want the $10 million? Once I added the temporary nature, it changed the value system. See, that $10 million sounds good until it became temporary for you to benefit from it. Once it became temporary, it changed your, boom, value system. Amen. It wasn't all that. It sounded good up front. That's what the world does. It sounds good up front. 
But he wants you to know the world is passing away. So don't treat it like stuff not going nowhere. Okay, let me give you another. As you've heard me say before, I consider squash an unholy vegetable. <laughs> Me and squash don't, we don't, we don't connect. We have issues. We, the conflict with me and squash. But suppose somebody said to me, Evans, I want you to eat squash for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Three times a day for a year. I want you to eat squash breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I don't like squash. I hate squash. But Evans, if you will eat squash for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I will pay all your bills for the rest of your life. Come on, squash. Come on, squash. Get me a cookbook. Find out different ways to cook squash. I love me some squash. Me and squash are in love with each other. Because what you just did was affect my view of squash. I may not prefer it, but you've changed my mind about it because the long-term benefit is worth the temporary inconvenience. Unless you have a long-term perspective, you will settle for the temporary passing away of the world while losing the father in the middle of it all. 